name is Andromeda. I am the very first MUAA, makeup artist android. I was created to help humans feel more attractive and also to express themselves. I'm sure you will find our services of value. How may I assist you today? I see that you would like a tutorial on the makeup that I'm wearing. Stand by for transmission in three, two, So guys, this makeup is going to take a little bit of prep work, and I know you guys are probably really excited to see the application process, but we got to do a quick rundown on how I made the prosthetics. It all started with my naked face cast, some clay, and these tubes that I found in the future. I did invent a time machine for this challenge and go to the future, and in the future they had this really cool store called Home Depot, and um, just happened to find these tubes on aisle 25. I placed the feature tubes onto my life cast and set them in place with a little bit of clay. These tubes are going to be providing the brain juice to my android, so it's very important that they have a nice little base to live in. Once I was happy with the placement, I began building up the forms of the forehead using the clay. The tubes run under the skin, so I sculpted in these ridges that gradually get smaller towards the center of my face. Kind of like ramps. More like a rounded ramp, like a rounded face ramp. On the tips of the face ramps, I added some folds where the tubing meets the skin, and let me tell you, I regret doing this, and um, you guys will find out later. I decided to also sculpt some new lips, mainly because my lips aren't perfectly symmetrical, and well, let's just face it, that doesn't cut it in Android land. I smoothed out the sculpture with a bit of 99% alcohol and added any more fine details before molding the pieces in UltraCal 30. I built up this mold using layers of the UltraCal and layers of burlap. Next I popped open the molds and cleaned out the clay and I will say that it's a very good idea to pop the mold while it's still slightly warm because the clay is going to come out a lot easier. And I did not do that for my forehead mold, so my future self is very disappointed in my past self because it took nearly eight hours to clean the clay out of this mold. Just imagine me with toothpicks picking clay out of the crevices. All those folds on the tip of the face ramps will haunt me forever. For these pieces, I cast them in gelatin because it's very easy to find, super affordable, and it's also translucent which means I can color it with foundation. So I mixed up a batch of gelatin, then I added the NYX Total Control Drops in Pale to the gelatin, gave it a good stir, and then poured it into the mold. I gave the mold a little manual rotation, then set the face cast in place and strapped the mold closed. After about 30 minutes and a stint in the freezer, I popped the mold open, retrieving my little jiggly face friends. That sounds much better than prosthetics. So now's as good a time as any to get bald capped. The bald cap is going to serve as a base for the forehead prosthetic, as well as my future tubes and my wig. After wetting my hair, I combed it down into a low ponytail. Then I used Redken's Shape Factor Sculpting Cream Paste to slick down any rogue hairs. Cause rogue hairs will ruin a bald cap party. To apply the bald cap, I pulled it down onto my head and drew a line around the perimeter of my face with the NYX Faux White Pencil in Linen. This line will give me an idea of where to cut to remove the excess plastic. It's also going to prevent me from cutting innocent baby hairs. Now it's time to glue the bald cap in place. I start by applying prosthetic adhesive to the center of my forehead. Then I let it dry and place the edge down. Starting in the center gives a good anchor point to the cap, and once it's in place, I went ahead and glued down the remaining edges. To rid the area of stickiness and pesky shine, I brushed on a layer of the SFX Set Powder. I test fit the jiggly face friend to my face, then began the process of gluing her down. I started in the center by applying a thin layer of prosthetic adhesive to both my face and the prosthetic. Gelatin is on the heavier side of materials and needs a little extra support to hold it in place. 
Once the adhesive turned clear, I went ahead and placed her down in her intended spot. And then I kept gluing her down, working outwards in sections. Around the edges of the prosthetic, especially around the eyes and the nose, I'm going to be using the NYX Pro Angled Eyeliner Brush and a little bit more Prosade. This brush is actually perfect for getting into those tight spaces. If you're easily offended, look away now, because I had to sacrifice this NYX sponge to the makeup gods. I tore a little piece off and then used it to stibble on prosthetic cream. This little trick helps to create a skin texture around the edges, therefore camouflaging them. After a quick layer of the SFX set powder, it's time to start painting. I prep my skin with a little bit of the NYX Angel Veil Primer. I apply this all over my skin and even to my neck and chest. Next I use the Dark Circle Concealer in Fair to spot conceal under my eyes. As you can see, I have very dark circles. And as you can see, this concealer corrected those. I have been working a lot lately with the airbrush, so I thought it'd be cool to show you guys how to use NYX products with an airbrush. So I started by taking the NYX Control Drops in Pale, and I added a dropper full of that foundation to my airbrush gun. Next, I added a few drops of airbrush center to the foundation to dilute it. Then I placed my finger on the tip of the gun, pushed down on the trigger, and this is going to cause the foundation and the thinner to back bubble and essentially mix. To apply the foundation, it helps to think of the airbrush gun like a brush. When you press down on the trigger, it's important to constantly move the gun in circular motions as well as figure eight motions. If you focus on a certain area too long, the foundation's going to build up and look quite patchy. So keep that wrist moving in fluid motions. Since the foundation is thin, I do like to work in layers to build up the opacity. It's like a watercolor for the face, for all those art nerds out there. For the blue coloring of Andromeda, I used a combination of NYX eyeshadows. I scraped a mixture of both blue and white eyeshadows from various palettes and singles into a small cup to create a bright blue. Much like the sponge, I did have to sacrifice these guys, but they were brave little soldiers. Once the color was right, I added the airbrush center to liquefy those shadows, and voila, we have an airbrush paint. I airbrushed that color around the edges of the forehead and also into the hollows surrounding the tubes. Next, I used a veining and modeling technique to break up the skin tone. To do this, I adjust the air compressor to a lower PSI, then I move the gun around in jittery sporadic motions. It creates these really cool organic patches of color, which I love. Focus that blue color around the bridge and sides of my nose as well, and then I used it to contour my eyelids, creating a soft 20 style crease. Then I continue the same modeling technique on the rest of my face, keeping it lighter in the center of my face to keep a stronger focal point. Now I made a deeper blue airbrush color using the NYX Primal Shadow in Hot Blue, and I wanted different shades of blue just so I could add more dimension to the makeup. I used this color to add depth to the cheekbones and also to the false crease of my eyes. And there's nothing like an airbrush for giving you really nice, soft, blended out effect. Moving right along to the beauty makeup, I'm going to be using the Vivid Brights Liner in Sapphire Blue to add dots around my crease. These dots can be totally sporadic. Actually, the more random, the better. I even added them to the inner eye corners as well as underneath the eye. With NYX's white liquid liner, I added even more dots just to kind of break up the blue a bit. To my eyelid, I just had to have some shine. Everything is going pretty matte so far, so a bit of shine can really pop out of makeup. I used the glitter primer to apply the pigment in diamond, and I really tried to keep in mind that 20 shape as I applied it. 
Next we have this glorious colored mascara, which is NYX's Mint Julep. And this stuff seriously impressed me with this pigmentation. I could not see any darkness in my lashes. It was all this beautiful kind of mint color. Under the eyes, I went back in with a blue sapphire liner to create a wing that extends under the eye and extends upwards towards the crease. Let's move a little down south and work on the chest. I applied the Total Control Foundation with the airbrush to my neck and chest. And much like the face, I modeled the skin using the bright blue. Then I added another layer of the Pell Foundation. That's a great advantage of using an airbrush because you can layer the products and get a really translucent effect to the skin. Next I added darker blue modeling and set everything in place with the SFX Set Powder. The eyes needed a bit more contrast, so I grabbed the Sapphire Blue Vivid Bright Slider again and outlined the crease. I also added some more dots because when can you have enough dots? I don't think you ever can really. To finish off Andromeda's eyes, I added the faux white pencil in powder blue to my inner rim. For this lady android, I decided pretty early on that I wanted her to have a power button. So using the top off of a Clarisonic brush head, I sculpted a circular design, which I then molded and ran in gelatin. After painting the prosthetic with the Primal Blue airbrush color, I adhered it to my chest with prosthetic adhesive. Then I airbrushed the dark blue eyeshadow around the perimeter. To pop out all of the details I sculpted, I used the Lid Lingerie in Fame and Fortune. I brushed this color over the highest points of my sculpt and then painted the gear-like portions of the circle. And we are finally to the last part of this makeup and that is Andromeda's lips. I only ended up using the top lip that I sculpted because the bottom lip just didn't come out so great. So I applied my gelatin lip to the top using the prosthetic adhesive. And to paint the lips, I used the Cosmic Metals Lip Cream in Celestial Star, which is this beautiful dark metallic blue color. I did go ahead and airbrush a UV reactive makeup on top of everything just because I knew I'd be filming in black light and thought it would look really, really cool. And for the hair, I applied this white wig, which I styled, and then I glued on my future tubes. There are tubes from the future. Thank you for watching. You now have seven days to vote for Team Starling in the Face Awards. It is your mission to get us to the top six. If you accept this mission, head over to nickspaceawards.com and cast your three votes daily. Please remember, humans, the future is in your hands. So choose wisely.